right. Um, greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee, um, March 19th of 2019. I'm going to officially uh, introduce our um, voting members. Um, my name is Kelly Robinson, and I'm the chairman of the Transportation Committee. To my right, is, I mean, to my left is Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. She's the chairman of the Board of Commissioners and also vice chair with me on this committee. To my right is County Administrator Mark Till. Um, um, across from him is Miguel Valentin, Director of Transportation. Next to him is um, Gary Watson, Director of Mobility. Am I missing? That's our five voting members. We have Jessica um, to my far right, and she's our secretary. Um, Miguel, will you introduce everybody else that's here? Certainly. We have uh, uh, some additional staff from the transit side. We have Ms. Janet Willis, our compliance officer. And uh, down on the end, uh, uh, Jamal Shepard. I get a bit confused with you. Uh, Mr. Shepard is our transit uh, services coordinator. Welcome. Thank you for thank you being here. All right, we've got a pretty full agenda. We're going to hit this and keep it very, very tight. So, Miguel, you know what we're trying to get through. Um, and um, very first order of business, of course, is our meeting minutes from our last meeting. Yes, we have um, approval of the February 19th, 2019 uh, minutes. All right, did everybody have a chance to take a look at them that were sent out earlier by Jessica? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, can I get a motion then to adopt the meeting uh, as presented? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we will keep going. All right, uh, Chairman, the, the first item on the agenda is a presentation on regional transit planning by the firm of BHB. Uh, as you are aware, there, there is a renewed push on the transit side uh, for a regional uh, connectivity system. And uh, as we are trying to develop the criteria and uh, taking a look at the uh, studies from the past, uh, starting with the original concept three layout and, and uh, newer studies, uh, there are several firms who are looking at uh, what the options might be going forward and what the planning process might look like. So BHB, uh, we've got a couple of uh, gentlemen here, uh, Brady Smith and Tim Priest, and they're going to uh, lead us through uh, their uh, understanding of where we are and where we might be headed as it relates to regional transit. And, and before we, we get started, and, and, and now the chair to the audience, as you guys know, this is being filmed for, for some of our guests that are here. And, and just for the record, one of the things we do as commissioners, especially with, with Madam Chair's committee structure, it allows us to get a little bit deeper into decision making that, are, that is made by the administration. But to be able to do that, it's important that we as district commissioners are educated. So Madam Chair, we met um, at a conference, we met Mr. Grady, and we asked him to, um, Grady Smith to come out and speak to us and give us education. It's always about being having that, that primer as a foundation. So when the administration comes before us, with the ask that we're able to properly give guidance. So well, we're, we're really excited to be here, Commissioners, uh, yes. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, to give you an overview. I've had the opportunity to work on many transit projects around. Miguel mentioned Concept 3. Uh, I was heavily involved in that many years ago, developing the first regional transit plan, and also have assisted the county uh, here, uh, Douglas County and Greg, uh, and folks on your your mobility plan that was developed a few years ago. So we, we, we're no <coughs> stranger to, to Douglas County. Um, let me tell you just a little bit about BHB, not a sales pitch at all, but just want to uh, give you a snapshot of who we are and what we do. Um, we're a firm located on the East Coast uh, from Maine all the way to Florida. Our operations in Atlanta is about 50 people, heavily focused on transportation. Uh, we take an integrated uh, services approach to everything we do. Uh, so that includes community planning, that includes highway design, transit planning, uh, anything under the sun related to real estate, local and county government services, even a federal practice, uh, is all integrated into our approach to projects. So again, uh, our operations here in Atlanta is focused in, uh, we're, we have uh, two offices, in fact, one out in Gwinnett County, another one, our main office is uh, down in uh, Midtown Atlanta, uh, with about 51 transportation-focused staff. That includes highway designers, transportation planning staff, uh, traffic engineering, 
uh, as well as a pretty large environmental, uh, environmental group. Um, so as Miguel said, there's been a lot of activity around transit, and this graphic kind of takes you back even further. And what we wanted to illustrate here is green and yellow, green, and maybe it should be red in the, in the middle here because we weren't doing a whole lot around transit in Atlanta. But back in the 70s, late, uh, late 60s, uh, when the MARTA Act came about, before that, uh, we had the Atlanta City Bus Company, which was a private bus company that ran bus services uh, around the city of Atlanta. The services at the time was really focused on uh, connecting the affluent areas to the underserved areas in the Atlanta region. And of course, uh, the term made routes came out. And that's essentially what that company did. They really focused on getting uh, African Americans out to these areas to work uh, back in the 60s. And so when the MARTA referendum came about in 1965, the vision at that, that time was a more seamless, it's exactly what Miguel said, it was to develop a seamless regional transit system. So there was a lot of activities through the 70s. Uh, the first MARTA rail line piece was built uh, back in 79, uh, came online, it was from Avondale uh, to uh, the Georgia State system and then eventually uh, on to Five Points. Uh, Cobb County Transit uh, came online in the, uh, 1989, so they were the first suburban system uh, to uh, uh, bring service to the Atlanta region. Uh, Greta Services, which uh, are provided here in, the, in Douglas County initially, uh, took off in 1999. Uh, when, you, when you look at what's going on now in, uh, in the two, late 2000s here, you see a lot of activity. Um, of course, Clayton County went the referendum. We were heavily involved in helping them develop their transit plan that went, their list of projects that went out to voters. The city of Atlanta just passed a, a, an additional half cents, uh, that roughly $2.4 billion that they'll be investing into transit. Uh, of course, we have the big vote in Gwinnett County tonight. Um, and all of these referendums uh, are on the heels of a lot more that's been going on around the country. There's about a 70% success rate right now and if Gwinnett kind of follows that national trend, we may see some success out in Gwinnett County tonight. I'll talk a little bit more about the ATL and some of these other activities. Um, so what has changed? And the big, we believe the real strong force has been changes at the federal level, right? Uncertainty around federal funding. Uh, when the MARTA system was built, uh, MARTA received about 80% of their dollars from the federal government. Uh, that match now in today's world, world is about 50-50. And the rumors in Washington as we speak is that it's going to even go lower to around 30-35% uh, federal share in investing in transit. So it's so all around the country, local governments, county governments, municipal, municipal governments are getting their acts together around funding uh, local transit. Of course here in Georgia, House Bill 170 passed. Uh, that was a, a, a gas tax bill uh, that led to our major mobility investment program. As you guys are probably aware, there's a lot of uh, GDOT investment going, going into managed lanes, going into uh, a number of interchange improvements around the metro Atlanta area. That's a ripe opportunity for improved express op bus operations as well as bus rapid transit operations. Um, I mentioned in uh, last year, or 2017, uh, the city passed their half cents tax. It was a 70% uh, turnout for that. Uh, in 2018, House Bill 930, which created the ATL, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And as we watch what's going on under the Gold Dome now, there's even more focus on transit from a rural perspective with House Bill 511. Um, regional transit expansion around House Bill 930. Um, the Atlanta Transit Link Authority, um, as you know, you guys are um, a part of District 8, and uh, you've got some strong representation on the, on the committee. Uh, on the group. Um, what it does though, it gives counties a new option to go to referendum up to a levy of a, a, a full half cent, a full cent to build transit systems and to operate those systems. It's a 30 year, as we understand, a 30 year tax. Um, but it does give a lot more autonomy to the counties to be more aggressive in how uh, those tax dollars are used to implement transit in their area. Uh, the county chooses the operator, be it MARTA or some other operator, the county has the opportunity to define its vision for transit and how that vision will be operated and maintained over time. Um, so when we go back and we really focus in on what's going on because of all of this in our region, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of activity around transit. Um, I mentioned uh, the importance of understanding the types of different transit, and there's not one size that fits all. 
Um, there are a lot of new technologies around transit coming online. And I know Douglas County, through your mobility efforts earlier, have been looking at some of these things, such as microtransit. Um, but we provided a, a snapshot of all the different types of transit, what they cost to operate, uh, how much they cost uh, to build, some character, general characteristics of those transit, uh, transit technologies, and the handout that we have out there. So as we look at what's going on around our region, I'll start with Clayton County and what they've done. Um, in fact, we're heavily involved in their uh, process right now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they went out and, uh, uh, to referendum and they passed a one cent sales tax. Unique to their situation is they put half of that sales tax in escrow for building out a high capacity transit investment. And then the other half is, in, uh, is being used to implement their local bus services. Uh, so pretty interesting. Uh, just recently they've uh, decided that their high capacity transit would be a commuter rail line. Uh, nothing new to, to Clayton County or to South Metro. Uh, that line was studied by Georgia DOT several years ago, but now they're moving that into implementation and it will connect East Point down to Lovejoy, right down the heart of Clayton County, providing new TOD opportunities in the, the various uh, town centers along the way. So all the way through Barrow, Lake City, Jonesboro to, to Lovejoy, they'll, they'll be implementing this commuter rail line uh, as they move forward. They're also looking at bus rapid transit uh, on the western side of their county uh, along the State Route 85, uh, State Route 139 corridor. Uh, that system would be very similar to rail. Uh, they envision it operating in a, a dedicated lane uh, with stations and all the amenities that you would have a, with a rail system. Uh, so they are pushing those two investments uh, they're moving into the environmental processes and the federal approval processes uh, to move those projects forward at the same time they're also building what they're calling a multi-purpose facility uh, for operations and maintaining buses and the trains but also for training customer services uh, the big focus for them has been jobs and job creation and so uh, this multi-purpose facility is an opportunity uh, to help bring that on board and then finally a very very important piece to their puzzle is getting the trans transit supportive land use right. Um, as I stated earlier, transit can be a conduit to economic development. Uh, they are looking at updating their zoning codes uh, and development regulations to provide incentives, to look at parking, to look at all the things that detract from transit working and encouraging the development to happen in the places where they want to see it. So they're, they're taking on this whole new transit supportive land use uh, initiative. All the cities are involved as well as the county. The next slide talks about Fulton County and I'm going to ask Tim to talk real quickly about what's going on over there. I'll give Grady a break. <laughs> I'm Tim Priest and uh, it, as you can probably tell uh, we're both passionate about transit but also one or both of us is probably involved in most of these uh, recent studies so uh, hope we find uh, you find this very informative and, and useful to you so Fulton County um, after years ago having a transportation plan uh, then assembled their first transit master plan in 2017-2018 uh, they just completed it uh, early in 18 and the idea was develop a uh, transit master plan look at how much it's going to cost look at the funding opportunities and then move right to a uh, Fulton County transit uh, funding sales tax referendum so today they've decided not to go uh, out to the uh, referendum as of yet um, but they did get a special provision in House Bill 930 which Grady mentioned um, which gives them the opportunity to to uh, go ahead and go back out uh, for referendum on this plan at uh, I think it's two tenths of one penny um, and their plan has a very specific list of projects and a very specific map and it says if we pass this referendum this is what we will build um, now similarly DeKalb County has seen this opportunity and said well we don't really we have a transportation plan also that, that uh, is, needs to be updated but it also is not very specific about transit so DeKalb County is underway right now with a transportation master plan DHB is actually leading that um, it's being led by DeKalb County and ARC and working with all 12 cities in DeKalb. Uh, it will create short-term and long-term transit uh, solutions. Uh, it's looking at funding scenarios um, and it will, it's already actually produced uh, a draft list of short-term transit projects. 
Um, some of the things that we're looking at there, uh, very, very specifically, uh, because there's new technology that gives us access to new data we didn't have just a few years ago. Uh, we can now look very specifically at people's movements around the county. Uh, so on a typical day, where they come from, where they go to. Both trips within the county as well as trips leaving the county to go to work or trips coming into the county for work. So uh, that's information we're studying very, very closely, developing uh, short-term, mid-term, long-term. Um, DeKalb County's uh, sort of direction for this is um, when we are finished with that transit plan, which will be uh, later this year, uh, they will then update their overall transportation plan and pull that transit plan right into part of the rest of their plan. Uh, another transit initiative underway uh, right now in the region is, um, it's informally known as the Mayor's Study, um, but it's officially known as the I-285 Top End Transit Study. And what this is all about is uh, these communities along the top end of 285 are looking at the managed lanes which Georgia DOT is advancing. Uh, Georgia DOT is right now in design and environmental permitting for express toll lanes on the top end. Uh, and they will probably look something like those which are now open um, on I-75 and Cobb in the Northwest Corridor, except on I-285 those lanes will be in both directions. They won't reverse uh, morning and evening. They'll be permanently uh, constructed in both directions. So what this study is looking at is, well, if we're going to have these special lanes, how can we use those uh, for, for bus transit? How can we better use them for bus transit? Um, so very interesting. They're looking at how the buses can get in and out of the facility uh, more, more easily to get to the large employment centers. And they're also looking at some opportunities to fund adding some infrastructure elements on top of the managed lanes specifically to serve those buses. Uh, they're looking at funding options such as value capture of station areas. In other words, if we, if we further increase the development potential where we're putting uh, transit access, can we capture some of that value? It's similar to a um, tax increment financing or something like that. So very interesting. That's going on. And I, and I should mention we didn't do a slide on this, but we're about to start in the next couple of weeks a uh, similar, um, similar effort further around 285 on the east side into DeKalb County. Same question. Uh, GDOT's building managed lanes. The question is how can we better use those lanes for transit since they will, they will be in place. We just recently finished a uh, transit feasibility study around the Aerotropolis area. Um, it has a number of components. I won't walk through them all, but just highlight a couple that I think are particularly of interest um, to you all here in Douglas County. Um, this plan, like some of the others, was timed to be complete and provide input to the regional transit plan that we'll talk and just talk about in just a second. Um, but a couple of elements that would relate to Douglas specifically. One of those is this plan identified the need for an intermodal transportation center near the airport. Right? The airport area is the most multimodal location in the entire state of Georgia. Um, right? There's People driving cars by themselves, there's carpools, taxis, Uber, Lyft, you know, there's bikes, there's MARTA train, there's buses, there's private shuttles, there's just about every mode you can think of. Uh, but there's really not a good place for, for those to interface and for people to take one and then transfer to another. Uh, it sort of happens today by default at either the domestic terminal or at the College Park Harness Station. But there are certain connections that don't happen unless you can move between those two locations. So why is that of particular interest to this guy? Well, because one of the modes that we see that's lacking uh, a place, a destination in the Aerotropolis District are these express buses. And we met a couple times with the folks at Greta. They right now are looking at implementing part of their next phase of expansion of the regional express bus system, which would involve express buses from various uh, places in our region to the airport. Um, so that is potentially a, a benefit of interest to, uh, to Douglas County, as, as I know you're served by express bus service already, but it doesn't go to the airport. Not, not yet. No. Um, something else that might be of interest uh, to you is on, on the map, the, the green line, Camp Creek Parkway corridor. Um, we see a good opportunity to bring a transit connection from the airport over to the vicinity of 285 at Camp Creek Parkway. Because we have a lot of communities um, to the east side here, to the east of Atlanta, that make a lot of regular trips to the airport. Uh, but today, we don't have a transit option at all that goes there. Uh, so we see a great potential there. 
Can we keep rolling with passenger rail or you want the rail to get off? Five minutes. Yes, All right. Perfect. All right. So, so you've heard a lot and there's been a lot happening around the region, but you guys have a good foundation to start on too. Uh, this just identifies the, the Georgia Rail Passenger Program uh, back in 06 and its uh, vision for commuter rail through Douglas County with a station right here in Douglasville that would extend further out. So there's already been some study very similar to that Lovejoy line that in Clayton County that they're implementing. There is a foundation here in Douglas County and, and beyond. And then finally, as I said earlier, you guys have also have a great basis to work from in the work that was led by Gary and his group. Um, a lot of good ideas, a lot of good circulator ideas, a lot of good connections uh, to start from. So with all that being the case, uh, I know, Miguel, you're moving forward with your comprehensive transportation plan. That can be done in a lot of different ways. It could include a, a master plan, transit master plan element, it, uh, similar to what uh, DeKalb County is doing now, or it can be combined or separated. There are a lot of opportunities to refine your vision through your comprehensive transportation planning process. There's also work going on at the ATL, and they're looking for projects, they're looking for opportunities. Uh, so uh, their adoption of the first regional transit plan is scheduled for fall, uh, but right now they're in the process of bringing together all the various projects from all the various counties and municipalities. Uh, as you probably heard from us, we have CIDs looking at transit now. We also have uh, local governments, uh, county governments, and city governments. City of Brookhaven, for example, is looking at <coughs> BRT along Beaufort Highway. Mm -hmm. uh, the city of Chambly right now up in DeKalb County is looking at a, an autonomous shuttle program that will connect their studio uh, down to the MARTA station. So there's a lot of different folks bringing ideas to the ATL. Douglas County has the oppor opportunity to do the same. And then finally, uh, the update of the ARC Regional Transportation Plan is slated for early 2020. Uh, Miguel is there at the table sitting uh, there on the TCC and is aware of that process. Another great opportunity to uh, advance transit ideas. So with that, we'll try to answer any questions that y'all may have of us. And right. thank you for having us. Thank you, Dylan. Okay, anyone? Hey, Miguel, I'm going to lean to you to say, help translate this. Well, I've got a couple, and I'm sure if you want to go first. Or... All right, real quick, and, and again, um, right now we've got the ATO coming down to this. Now, mm -hmm. that's really, um, my focus um, as a primary that says, okay, you got the ARC requirements that are normally due. You got the ATO to just put this uh, based on our last com uh, uh, committee meeting that within 45 to six days we need to come up with a project list. And but yet we haven't formally gone through a process or a planning exercise to line this up. These are I mean it's almost like when we went um, and we did a referendum for um, the SPLOS. We came up with a list and said, okay, this is what we're going to go to the street with. And I'm trying to avoid that experience that, that when we codify these lists of projects, that they don't, they, they, they bind me. Now, we didn't do that. Obviously, we got around that with the referendum because we just said, you know, by percentages that we had, we were able to, we got discretion. But I'm real careful, you know, that we got through that one, but I'm real careful with this, anything regarding transportation as to not be bound. Mm -hmm. or, or at least have a formal process that, yeah, we're really committed to this. So how do, how do we bridge the gap? I mean, will our capital transportation plan or some type of transit plan help bridge all these expectations that <coughs> folks do, but also for our need as commissioners that have to make a decision to commit to what are we being asked? And I, right now, I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, and, and essentially what, what's happening uh, as it relates to the ATL is they're sort of skipping a step in a way because they're, they're a new agency and normally there would be the initial analysis, the study, the assessment of what the needs are and then developing a program to meet those needs. In this particular case, uh, because the ATL is, is new, they are relying on either studies that have been done by counties and municipalities uh, or perhaps at a regional level to uh, use as a starting point. And so uh, the expectation is that the, as they gather the list of projects, they will use that as a reference to then begin the process of assessing what the regional needs and the connectivity needs are going to be. So, the, so no, uh, no list 
that is submitted by uh, county municipality or CID at this point is binding on anybody. It is an information gathering exercise that they will use as a basis to start their analysis for the project. And, and they'll need that. Okay, so again, back to this, this is important, which is obviously at the ATL, there's gonna be somebody aggregating all these project lists, the master lists, and they're gonna come up with this sort of this framework. Well, I mean, just listening to what I just heard, it's like, but, and knowing my own experience, it's like, but I want to give, I want to give input, I want it to be meaningful, right? Right now, if there's nothing, if, but, but, but historically in Douglas County, was it transportation in general as it relates to mobility has been very limited. There had not been any formal plan. You may have a line here, a line here somewhere in po some PowerPoint along the way, some historical document, but we really don't have anything that has really framed us from a county's perspective until our capital transportation plan in 15. And so we got that one moment in time. So I'm saying, but you have new leadership. You have a, a, a new emphasis and openness to this. And I'm like, okay, that does not reflect today. And so I'm trying to like, I'm, you hear where I'm going, like, okay, well, let's I, make I, sure we formally yes. were able to um, give a, a real, and, and, and some things don't have to be a real formal, some things can be, you know, I used to be an international consultant, so I know how to go into countries and into companies and do you know, uh, SWOT analysis and do it very, do scoping exercises very quickly. In other words, rapid implementation, rapid design. So I'm, 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 I'm pushing a little bit to say, but the list that we will submit in less than 30 days, we haven't really sat down and talked about it as us giving you feedback, meaning the Board of Commission, not saying that your operation has it, so how do we bridge that gap and leverage this bigger picture if you just came to us uh, a couple weeks ago given the authorization to move forward? I mean, how, how do we bridge this gap? Well, I think uh, we will have to engage in, a, in an update of our transit services uh, analysis. Uh, whether, and we do have the opportunity uh, of combining it with the comprehensive transportation plan update. That's, uh, we have, in fact, we have a, a contract uh, or an agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission is going to be coming to the board in the next month or so. And uh, so that could be a component of, but it would have to be uh, amplified to do what the, the in-depth analysis on the transit side. So the ARC, to, well, so the ARC that you say we're already down a path on, the capital transportation plan, did that same that same document be used for what the ATL is? Let me see. You got these yes. two agencies, and I'm trying to Madam Chair, I'm just trying to bridge what's really being asked of us in yeah. a very fast. So be patient, but help answer that. Understood. Yeah, they they uh, they perform similar functions in a sense that uh, the the uh, Atlanta Regional Commission was the designated federal agency to oversee planning and coordinate planning for the region. They still perform that function for transportation projects. Yep. Now the ATL is going to take over that function on the transit side. So they're relying on the historical information that the Atlanta Regional Commission has been shepherding throughout the uh, historical, uh, you know, throughout the last studies. And now, with that information, the information from the various counties, results from uh, transit studies, uh, they will take all of that information and basically they will then become the agency that's going to coordinate the transit side. The Atlanta Regional Commission will continue to coordinate the transportation side. Okay, that's sufficient. Let me, Madam Chair, go and I'll, we'll come back later. Thank you. Madam Chair? I really don't have anything except to say that uh, job well done. I appreciate the presentation. I, well, I can mention this. Uh, from a regional connectivity standpoint, what are the plans for Georgia, just from a holistic standpoint, to connect all the, if we could, the major counties together, just uh, rail, or can you speak to that? 511 maybe? Yeah, I think, I think there's, a, there's a lot going on, Madam Chair, around that. We mentioned House Bill 930 and the discussion around the ATL developing a, a plan to do that. Um, and as Miguel alluded to, the idea is to work with each of the counties, work with all the various project sponsors, to develop a seamless system mm -hmm. of projects. So it's not just one county developing something and the other one doing something in isolation. Their job <coughs> is to make sure all that stuff is connected. We're starting to see that happen uh, in corridors like I-285 that Tim mm -hmm. talked about. That corridor is the top end, it touches three counties. 
mm -hmm. right? The Cat, Fulton, and Cobb. Mm -hmm. It also touches seven cities along that along that that top arc there. So the idea of those cities and counties coming together and the business community, by the way, mm -hmm. to support their initiative is exactly what the ATL is looking for. It makes their job a lot easier when everybody comes in and says, this is what our vision is and we're gonna work together to make this happen. So opportunities for Douglas to do a very similar thing with Cobb and other places mm -hmm. is exactly what they're trying to do. Okay, Thank you. Um, anybody else? I'm sorry, we're gonna have to keep this moving. We're our committee meeting is we're on time. Mark, county administrator? No, sir, I'm good. Okay. Gary, you want to say anything? Well, no, the only thing I would say is that, that we met with the representative of the TLARC last Friday and submitted our project list to them. They're the six-year project list, the 20-year project list. And at least our six-year project list we, we, was based on a couple of documents. One is the transportation services study that we did back in 2015 and 2016. Mm -hmm. And the other document that we used was the uh, capital uh, uh, improvement plan exercise that the county asked us to go through last year where we listed our projects and uh, estimated costs uh, for those. So that was very, very valuable as we submitted these projects to ATL and, and ARC. Uh, one of the projects that we did uh, submit in our list uh, to ATL and ARC was an update of our transit uh, services study uh, with the idea of doing that in, in 2020, uh, maybe after we've operated the bus service for about a year. So we have some, have some data on that. Um, to go back and, and update that entire study mm -hmm. and all the mobility options that are in there. Okay. So this is where, to that point, looking for y'all to help align this. Should they be together? Should they be separate? How to be, again, so we need to have this conversation. That's why we have this committee here. Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, I, gentlemen, thank you so thanks, much thanks for having us for being, for being here. Uh, you're welcome to sit. But I really would like you to sit through our next um, exercise, if you don't mind. <coughs> we'll 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 insightful, but you know, keep us going. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the next item on the agenda is an update from the collaborative firm on uh, their efforts. I'm going and Gary, you can introduce uh, where we are relative to those and uh, exercises. Michael Hightower of the collaborative firm is here to, to make a presentation. Good evening, and, uh, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Robinson, Administrator, of course, Gary and the Bureau. I'm also joined by my uh, by uh, Danielle Crow, who will, she will, she will round out uh, today with a uh, success story that we had this morning that she will kind of talk to you about and as well as share some other information. I'll be very, very proud. I, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner Miguel, as you know, we have uh, uh, been, uh, I was listening to uh, Tim and Grady talk and obviously uh, at this very hour, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are kicking off the Clark County CTP plan, Miguel, and uh, with uh, another firm uh, as we speak. And, and of course, we had the pleasure of being part of the, Tim mentioned the Fulton Transit Plan, we're part of that plan. And we also have been involved with the DeKalb Transit Plan, as well as the things we've done. Uh, it was good to see all this coming together from those guys. So those are things that we're involved in outside of Douglas, but also that connects with Douglas. Very briefly, uh, I'm gonna save the bulk of the time to really talk about this the, uh, this morning. But uh, so skip page two, if you would. Uh, very quickly, I think uh, page three, of course, uh, uh, you will, uh, Hope you see the video shortly. I want to <clears throat> thank Danielle for referencing that in, in that regard, uh, and that we produced the video which was shared this morning at, at the lunch and learn. And I believe uh, Commissioner Robinson, I believe you get a chance to get by there. I think that of course uh, uh, a promotion video for the uh, Big Shot bus service. It was shared for the first time uh, at, at, at today's lunch and learn today. So I think that was hopefully. I think you guys enjoy that. Uh, also for this month's up, update, obviously the uh, collateral material. Um, the, uh, the brochure that has been produced, and I think Danielle, you, you can share that when you come up as well, as well as the vertical banners. But we're also looking at uh, other items in the various stages of uh, production, which include the fare passes, discount costs, and the passion IDs. And obviously, working in conjunction with Gary and his other staff, and thank you guys for being so cooperative. Uh, as you can come on board as well. Uh, page five, uh, just briefly, uh, again on some of the uh, communication and social social media. Uh, activity. Uh, I think uh, as of March 8th, uh, uh, 
175 active social media followers here in this area. Uh, in addition, of course, the, uh, the Connect Douglas newsletter, uh, promotion of flyers, and, and uh, being involved with Women's History Month in, uh, as well. Uh, to this morning, uh, Danielle, are you guys ready yet? Mm -hmm. okay, um, uh, 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 this morning, uh, was a, and Gary, thank you again. I can't thank uh, Gary enough. Uh, Mr. Teal, Gary has been one of our biggest uh, liaisons here, so thank you for keeping him on board and keeping him around. <laughs> he has just been super to work with, and, uh, and uh, I want to just say thank you. Uh, ready for that? Danielle, you want to come on? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Madam Chair, Vice Chairman Robinson, uh, Transportation Committee. I'll, I'm just speaking extemporaneously. Michael um, Hightower, managing partner and founder of the collaborative firm, was here to give you a formal presentation. Um, as he just stated, we are just leaving a very successful event. But before I get into that, I will share uh, one of our newest collateral materials. But first, I should just say thank you. Um, it was some time ago since we started on this path and uh, having served as the primary project lead for this project for over a year now um, it's been quite a journey no transit uh, pun intended <laughs> it's been quite a journey so and, and to illustrate that I think is just to talk about where we were in terms of Douglas County Transit Services to where we are now as Connect Douglas with a co total complete rebranding so I'm just gonna if Jamal look they, they call me their fifth team member, so um, before I know it, they're going to have office space for me. But uh, I wanted to share that this was one of our collateral pieces that we developed in, in conjunction with developing the route maps, which are included in here, and uh, the fare passes and discount cards, ID cards, total repackaging, um, including the um, branding for the vehicles, for the cutaways. So this was distributed today at the Lunch and Learn, and let's see. I'm just going to show you a couple of visuals because, I mean, to say that it was standing room only. When I, I met before um, this past Transportation Committee, I shared the concept for this event that we would be hosting a series of on-site outreach events because we wanted to partner with other social service providers and community partners who serve the same people that we do. Well, don't want to see myself. <laughs> and it will not move. But I'll come back to that moment. Please move. <laughs> Please move. Please move. It will not move. Where's Jessica when you need her? Get off of that picture. Get to another one. But I'll come back to that moment. We, we were hoping to get at least 40 people. We had more than 65 people present. It was standing room only. Uh, and the partners that were present, we had people from Georgia Department of Labor, DFACS, West Georgia Technical, Youth Emporium, uh, Share House, you name it, they were there. And uh, these are people who serve the people that we're hoping to serve. So what we have done is uh, more or less create an, someone present as well from um, today. So they are now ambassadors of Connect Douglas. They received these brochures as well as a wealth of other information and um, have pledged their support, many of whom we will conduct further community kiosks and uh, they have asked to share more of that information. So I wanted to show you, Jessica, you're going to have to help me out here. Okay. Um, here this, this picture paints a, a, tells the story in itself as well and you'll see it a little later in our Women Drive uh, Progress um, social media campaign where we're highlighting women in Douglas County, such as uh, Madam Chair, who get things done in the county. This lady I had the pleasure of meeting, Miss Medina, um, during some of the public um, involvement <coughs> community uh, meetings last year. And I think uh, Chairman Robinson can add to this certainly later in that she came to him maybe 10 years ago when she visited Douglas County and said, this is what we need. She's been an ardent supporter. And so people need to understand our elected officials have moved for in, with the will of the people in providing this valuable service. So we were happy to have her there as well. This is a good story in that we saw, and I'm going to get off of my picture, is that that was a connection right there happening. 
the, the lady who was pictured uh, works with homeless students within Douglas County Schools, and there were several representatives within key service, uh, student service components that we were trying to target. She was one of them, because wraparound services are so important. I, she told me about a dilemma, I introduced her to the assistant director, and immediately on the spot, a resolution was found for a student who had won a scholarship but needed to travel into Atlanta, but did not have transportation. That's, that's what Douglas County Transit Services is about, about connecting people to the places that they need to go to and just um, providing that valuable service. So Lunch and Learn was a huge success. This is the first of a series. We plan to partner with other uh, organizations to have another for community partners, but there will also be a specific component, one for businesses. So we're going to target the um, businesses along the employment hub where we will be, um, I think it's Route 30, yes, yes. Uh, Cola Plaza, Medline, Cola Amazon Plaza. Fulfillment Center. So all of those, we, we're inviting representatives, so there will be a specific business one, uh, one for employment centers, and one also for businesses that people can frequent and patronize. So that's uh, Lunch and Learn in a nutshell, because I know we have to move on. Another thing that happened is that, Jessica, I need you. Another thing that happened while we were there is that we previewed uh, a video that we've been working on. And I guess I need to say, next, the other folder, inside there. There's a little photo. I want to thank, um, thank you all for, and Gary, I did that right before we left the Transportation Center, for trusting us because sometimes I'll come with ideas and I know sometimes it's a little scary. But I think this, this says a lot because what we do at the collaborative firm is sometimes we'll bring a concept but anything that we do has to fall in line with the, the mission and the way things operate within the county. So we partnered with the Department of Communications to produce this video. Uh, I developed the script and reviewed it with Gary and took all of the input from him and his team. And then we uh, coordinated with several locations which targeted groups that are potential riders, like West Georgia Technical and the Fowler Senior Center. Those people are featured in this video and attended the event and have already asked to share it on their page. They're ready to use it in their in-service when they do orientation with the students so that everyone knows about the service. So if at this time we're going to just show the link. I think I saw. So in this document, mm -hmm. we can do here. There's a, 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 a we do here. And so. So let's see if we can just press it from here. This video will go ahead and close this part out and be able to keep moving to our. Yeah. And so thank you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will roll out. You got a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, thank you. And then it was also emailed to the Mondo account, just so that's Let's easier. See. Yeah, I wonder if it will let us. Did you get a pen, an email back? No, because the connection in here is. No. You may have to type it in. Oh, that's fine. Let's do that. Let's Let's see. Time let's just. And for that sake, and I, I do want to acknowledge the fact that um, uh, I had a chance to stop by. I was double booked earlier today. I apologize. And I had a chance to stop by the Transportation Service Center and participate in this Lunch and Learn. And, and, and Madam Chair and County Administrator, I, I, I do, and Director Valentin, I do want to say that I was um, very pleased uh, with the quality of the turnout, um, the quality of the atmosphere, um, the quality of the participants, um, the quality of um, the service that was there. I mean, it was just, it was, it was first rate. I walked away pleased, smiling. These guys nailed it. Um, I think it was a very engaged. I, I had a chance to see all of Gary's staff for the very first time and, and, and watch how they engaged the citizens. And that was a, that was a very good stakeholder. If you, Madam Chair, if you could, if you could mimic that, 
all of our stakeholder meetings should be like that. And it, it was very well done. And so for that, I just wanted to openly acknowledge, thank you. The job, very well done. And again, he didn't know I was going to be there. So this, this wasn't staged per se. Um, but I, I just liked it. Um, Gary, I appreciate the fact that you didn't cut off the citizens' questions. That was important to get that feedback from them, um, mm -hmm. to hear what they had to say. And, like Nothing's critical. It's constructive. So for that, I appreciate how you handled the meeting. Again, I'm sure I was just flower the wall. Uh, you know, I, I, I yielded that, you know, gave remarks. But for the most part, Gary did very well. And um, you, you represented us very well um, in that moment. So I was very proud of it. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Very good. Everything is impressive. Yeah. And, and the brochures are good as yeah. well. So, all right, so again, we're buying time. Yeah, you'll keep us through this <coughs> On these brochures, are they available today to be given out? Yes. Or, yeah, they, they, we can give them out today. Um, um, is that video, if it's live, will that be able to be given out? Yes. Okay. Um, for the record, um, we're uh, we're not officially publishing a, a go live date. What did Jamal say? Sometime in spring, late yes, sir, spring. Late spring, yes sir. Late spring. That's fine. It, it keeps shifting. You can't go beyond spring. First is spring, spring now late spring. Okay, that that that's fine. Mid spring now it's late. That's fine. Um, um, will this was a question I just wanted for the record for the filming. Will we have? Maybe you have said before. Will there be at least a simple trial run? before the true go live date. So I'm just, whatever the go live date, will there be an opportunity, I understand you guys will go through it, but will there be a, a you know, a, a check ride? Yeah. Absolutely, we'll, we'll dedicate two to three weeks, okay. just on, on trial runs and making sure we really get you know. okay. Those trial runs will be controlled trial runs? Um, will it, is it like everybody can get on for free or uh, only this route is being run. I mean, do you have any ideas how you're going to approach that? Like, we're only going to do 10 this week, the 20 this week, the 30 this week, or, I mean, what's your approach? No, we... Or you turn the whole system on and let people... Yeah. It's, it's geared to jump, jump, Jamal, but I'm going to respond to that. Yeah, no, we'll, during our trial runs, we'll run everything real time, just like if we're, if we're uh, providing the service on a regular basis. Yep. We'll, all four routes will be running at the same time. Okay, all four. Okay. All right, how are we doing, guys? <coughs> Almost there. <laughs> okay. I like the, the 31 day pass. What about the months that are, like for example, February, February 28th? Would that allow that person to have three more rides or, it's you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 four, it's four thir four 31 th days. And uh, if you buy the pass today, it it will be good for 31, 31. days from today. So it's okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Like the colors, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're bright and <coughs> attention given. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and just to take that space out between the YouTube or did it go? Um, there was a space in there. was a space. You put a dot to the U, YouTube dot B, is that correct? It should be YouTube. That's what it is on the oh, link. That's what the link is. It's a dot. So I'm not sure. <coughs> <coughs> you to access it from your pad. Okay, guys, we, we're going to have to keep moving here. we got to stay on task. So if you get, you can work on it in the background. It's not too much distraction, but um, committee, we, we must stay on task here. Um, Miguel, so thank you again, Collaborative, for, for helping us with that information and stuff. Um, Rasha's. Uh, Director Miguel, please. Yes, sir. Um, we have some updates on the uh, the next Douglas, uh, or at least the, the bus uh, route. Uh, 
of an application yes. and other items uh, related to, to the rollout uh, in late spring of a fixed route bus service. And uh, Gary's going to run us through the details. Okay, great. Okay. First item is the FTA grant application review. Had contact with FTA uh, this morning, and they're pretty much ready to award. Uh, what we need to do now, the one last thing is for the Board of Commissioners tonight to authorize Madam Chair and the County Attorney to sign off on the search and assurances. Once we get that, we'll plug it into the uh, uh, grant system that FTA has. And after we do that, it should just be a, a matter of, of days, any time that yeah. we get that award. Okay. So that's the certification conversation we had yesterday. We say certification insurance. Certification insurance. Okay. We're mm -hmm. good. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. 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 So there we are on that uh, <coughs> transition to commute solutions contract negotiation. Yes. Um, we're getting close on that too. Uh, Matt Laverne has been handling the insurance aspect uh, of that. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty close to having that wrapped up and then transitions commute solutions is will be here oh. next Can Wednesday uh, and hopefully we can finalize uh, the budget matters the performance measures on that and then from there we'll be ready to, to submit a contract uh, to legal for review and then pass it on to the Board of Commissioners okay. Great. You ready? All right. Do you mind? No, go around here. Go ahead. All right, guys. Take a moment. <coughs> Meet the growing transit and mobility needs of our county. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners has expanded transportation options for citizens with the Connect Douglas Fixed Route Bus Service. Whether you're up for dining, shopping, working, or enjoying the many amenities of Douglas County, Connect Douglas's Fixed Route Bus Service will help to connect you to the places you want to go. Fixed Route means the bus will travel the same path and serve the same locations every day. There will be established stops along each route. However, the driver can pick you up anywhere along the route, provided there is a safe place to pull over and let you board. We will also offer Flex Route, which means by calling ahead, the bus can deviate from its route and pick you up at your location, provided you are within the perimeter of the area we have established for this service. For seniors and people with disabilities who cannot get to the established pickup points on the route, we will offer ADA paratransit. You must call ahead and make a reservation for this service. There is a simple certification process and additional charges may apply. We are so excited about the new fixed route shuttle system that we're bringing to Douglas County. To begin with, we'll be operating Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. One-way fares are $2.50. You can pay with exact cash as you board the bus or purchase a multi-trip pass at the Douglas County Transportation Center located at 8800 Doris Road in Douglasville. Discounted tickets of $1 are offered to senior adults age 60 and older, students, and individuals with disabilities. A photo ID discount card will be issued after completing a simple verification process at the Douglas County Transportation Center. Individuals will use the discount card when boarding the bus or paying for a multi-trip pass. The vehicles are called cutaways and are more like vans than buses. Each cutaway can carry a driver, 12 ambulatory passengers, and two wheelchairs. The vehicles have a wheelchair lift, a bicycle rack, audio announcement system, a fare box, security cameras, and digital destination signs. The Connect Douglas Fixed Route Bus Service will begin with four routes. Route 10 service area will include North Douglasville, the Boys and Girls Club, Arbor Place Mall, Walmart, Sam's, the Douglas County Health Center, and Douglasville Conference Center. Route 20 service area will include Douglas County Courthouse, Wellstar Hospital, West Georgia Technical College, Target Shopping Center, Georgia Highlands College, and the Douglasville Post Office. Route 30 will serve Thornton Road Walmart, Cobb West Business Park and Six Flags Industrial Park, Tributary Community and the Employment Hub, including the Amazon Fulfillment Center, West Rock, Medline, and Coloplast. 
Route 40 connects to Routes 10, 20, and 30 to provide service from Douglasville to the Lithia Springs area. This route will also provide a connection to Cobblink Route 30, which will provide a connection to the HE Home Smart Station. For more information about Connect Douglas Fixed Route Bus Service and the many ways the Douglas County Division of Transit Services serves the citizens of Douglas County, please visit us online at connectdouglas.com or contact us at 770-949-7665. Thank you. Very good. All right. Thank you, Gary. All right. Keep going. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Daniel. The next, the next two items, I'm going to let Jamal address those. One is the Cobb County transfer negotiations and uh, update on the routes and pickup locations. Jamal. Right. Yes. In reference to the Cobb County transfer negotiation, I've reached out to Ms. Andrea Ford of Cobb Lee. Uh, she has not been able to set up a meeting with her supervisors, but she has also authorized us that we can piggyback off their bus stops that's along the corridor of Thornton Road, which is going to connect their Route 30. But we do have uh, concessions in place to address that transfer situation that's going to happen at the uh, tributary, I'm sorry, at Epicenter location. And for the routes and the pickup location, we've been currently going throughout all four routes, identifying where we're going to have our dedicated fixed route stops placed at. Before you move off that, <coughs> what I just heard was we're still working through with the car, right? It yes. sounds like you're still working through it um, on the original intent, which is um, the connection right there at the episode. But what I just heard was a modification, but you can, in the meantime, do what on Thornton Road? On Thornton Road, they currently have bus stops in place. Yes, they do. And we're also going to have dedicated bus stops along along those same corridors, along those same areas. Okay. So instead of having two stops side by side, okay. we've uh, negated to be able to put our stop on their post. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that's fine. All right, I got that. Very good. But so then, that's a separate issue. All yes, right. sir. So, all right. So we get to save some money and spread our, our stop somewhere else? Is that what I mean, basically? That's yes. the benefit? Yes, sir. Okay, keep going. And also, like I stated, in reference to the, the routes pickup and their location, we're going around establishing um, dedicated uh, fixed route stops. And also, as you heard on the video, that we're also uh, going to be able to stop for patrons that need to get off or board at locations that are safe along the routes. Mm -hmm. Which, in Douglas County, uh, unlike Colorado or Riverside, they got sidewalks. Yes, sir. They, they have a little bit more um, formal infrastructure investment you know again they're further along than us which is okay so how will we uh will, will there be where there needs to be a key stop do you foresee us putting out a pad of some cement so people can stand there or are you just gonna put the pole in the ground i mean how, how will you address that right where there really does need to be a standing point I, having citizens stand in mud i've been there i've walked the path i understand so how y'all gonna address, address that real practical like, no, you don't need to stand the street. No, there's no right away along here, right here. Like, how will we address that part, right? Which is the, 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 the literal, again, I'm talking outside of school, but we, get, we just know where I'm going. Sure. I got a bus stop, I got a bus bench, but there needs to be a platform, a pad, and how, how does that work? Yeah, we're gonna have an assessment. Once we identify mm -hmm. the, the specific location, yep. then we're gonna have an assessment of what it, what it would take to make that location accessible that that is for designated mm -hmm. stops yes so if there is missing uh, sidewalk then we would uh, that would be part of establishing that uh, uh, connection okay. point uh, as a secure access point the, uh, the the difficulty as you alluded to comes from having uh, pickup locations uh, in between the designated stops. Mm -hmm. There is no continuous sidewalk or curbing or what have you, so we're going to have to have an assessment made by the driver as, as they're driving that route, whether they can safely pull over and pick up somebody in between stops. But as it relates to the stops themselves, the ones that are fixed where we would have benches and uh, trash receptacles and the like over time. That is part of an on ongoing assessment that we would bring those up to. 
Good. So tra training is key for this. It's okay. Go back to life and the conversation I just had. So that driver needs to understand some rules of engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Certain discretionary that says, okay, I press the button, pull the cord, whatever the case may be, and letting me off because I said I want to get off here, and I step off, and okay, there I go tumbling down. The, uh, and again, how do you? I'm not saying solve it today, <coughs> but that's something that I, obviously I'm thinking about now that we're getting a little bit more closer to going live. To make sure y'all got case um, um, case scenarios that y'all thought through. Um, exposure moments because again based on our terrain our topography it is what it is so I'm not being critical but it's, it's just thinking through that so mm -hmm. just a statement yeah. okay sure that and and the drivers will will be trained and well versed on that they can't they just can't stop anywhere um, and even if somebody pulls the cord in and wants to get off there that doesn't mean that the driver has to stop there he, he will stop at the next safe location for the, for the bus and the passengers on the bus and that individual also getting off the bus. Mm -hmm. a, a, a very good question that was asked today is during um, today's um, Lunch and Learn yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, was about ticket transfers. Yes. And, um, and while your party line answer was dead on the spot, uh, obviously I made a note of that to bring it back to this community, which is have we worked through cost sharing uh, regarding that, okay, I think we had an assumption that we would charge rate and we would be able to transfer smoothly and seamlessly, using your word, uh, onto the next system uh, and that there would not be an additional cost uh, out of pocket to the actual citizen themselves <coughs> at that moment of transfer. Now, I assume, is there something behind that statement? Because I'm, um, you said we were working through that. Is there something below that that during these MOU um, um, uh, uh, negotiations that that's not, they haven't agreed to that yet? No, the, the part of the issue is that Cobb County has been working on an evaluation of their own system. Right. They, they've been heavy into that. I think they just completed that. But um, they have, uh, their director of transit has not been able to get with their legal team to, to formally propose to them that we be able to transfer at no cost. So that's what uh, Jamal means when he says negotiations are, negotiations are still going on. We're, we're, we're in contact with them constantly. They're, they just haven't come back with an answer or an MOU for us to, to review yet. Yes, if I may add, in terms of the discussions with them, uh, that's how the discussion went. The expectation would be that we would be able to have our patrons transfer into their system and mm -hmm. vice versa without uh, any issue. The logistics of that and, and working through the legal lease mm -hmm. is what remains to be completed, but the understanding between the two agencies is that that's how it would operate. Yes. Right. So, there's, there's uh, so, yeah, so follow my logic. So I get on on our side, and I transfer in, and I go wherever I'm going that way. Usually we're not just going one way, so there's a return trip. Mm -hmm. So on the return trip, I'm paying into their system, correct? and then they get the transfer back into us. Correct. So there's a, what am I missing? And so you, you, you made whole, I get, I get it, don't get me wrong, I'm not. But, but I think um, the spirit of it is that you're made whole just with a single you know, round trip, right? Okay, I get it, you get it. It's not fully loaded, but yet it's it's a it's a sharing at the borders, right? It's the intent to keep the whole system going, right? So I'm just curious as to what that's something we need to knock down, but that's something that we need to finalize. There's there there is no disagreement or discord uh, between Cobb staff and Douglas staff as as to a, a free transfer in and out of the system. It's just, it's just got to go through their legal process. So we, so it's at, at, at a higher, do we, I mean, how do we get it unstuck? If my thought would be you have a good relationship with Commissioner Cupid, um, have a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Anything else you want to add? Uh, that, was, that was it I have. We'll get it back to you. Back to you. Yeah, let, let me add a couple of things to what Jamal has said about the, the routes. He has spent a lot of time going around to, 
to various locations that we want to stop yep. uh, trying to get um, agreements either verbal or, or written um, with those locations to allow us to stop we're having some issues with that and, and two examples i can give you is uh the target shopping center in what is it arbor square yes arbor square. One, the one at the corner of highway 5 and douglas boulevard yeah. uh, both of those locations have denied us permission to go into their parking areas to pick up individuals where's arbor square right at the corner of Highway right. 5 and Douglas Boulevard. Right, and the target is on Chapel Hill. Correct. <coughs> so they're saying we can't go into their parking areas to pick up uh, riders, which means uh, for the Arbor Square, we're like, most likely gonna have to stop out on Douglas Boulevard, which um, I'm not thrilled at at all about that possibility. So, um, we're still trying to work through some issues like that. Uh, the stops that we wanted to make at those locations may have to be changed. How many stops was that Arbor Square? Just one just there. Just one yeah. there, and how many at the Target? Just one. Okay. Cool. Uh, so those you're working through it. We're working through it. Yes, sir. I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the yeah, community. Yeah, it's almost like you got to find a soft landing pad or a proper one, just like the sidewalks. Right. Yeah. I understand. Okay, keep moving. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we would, we would have to develop an alternative that's at a safe location as close as possible right. to our original destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay next, next and final item on our update is uh, the deliveries of the cutaways. Yes. Uh, those deliveries are scheduled uh, in the period March 29th through April the 2nd. Uh, we will take delivery of them then, we'll do our inspections, and at that time, we will have a contract in place with a vendor to go ahead and wrap those uh, additional vehicles. How long does it take to wrap? Um, well, there's going to be 11 for, for them to wrap. Uh, I would anticipate that would take a week to 10 days okay. to do all of them. A week to 10 days, so it would take we'll talk about <coughs> it, the middle of May so end of May <laughs> no we'll, of we'll have them ready uh, no. second week in May second week. right not, not May I'm sorry second, second week, week in April, April. Yes. Mm -hmm. we'll have the second week of April mm -hmm. and so be by the first of May they should be wrapped they should be wrapped by the second week in April. April. They yeah. should be wrapped. Totally wrapped. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But give and take, which we can't control. I'm just trying to anticipate like so. Uh, so by the 1st of May, everything is in place, right? <coughs> that, that's if, if we've got the, um, the contract with uh, Transitions Community Solutions ready to go by, by the end of the calls. We've got to submit it to to our legal for their review and then submit it to the board of commissioners. Right. So we're just trying to you know, trying to put the plan together and figure out what the critical path is to, to get to a place of go. Right. At some point, you got to pick a date. At some point, you got to notify the public, to let them know two three weeks ahead of time that we're about to go live, like we said today. Well, you got to have a, a, an end date, right? Uh, and so, and I know some of it you can't control, but I'm just trying to anticipate. That's all. We're good. Anything and, else, guys? And, yeah, what I would add to that is that initially the, 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 the intent is for the service to be operational on a trial run basis. So we, we have some flexibility as to how long we roll that out and then set that date to go live uh, and let it be on the So you will roll out a pilot. We, we sort of alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, I'm running it well. I know we had a conversation with them all. Yes. Um, perhaps running two, a couple of weeks. So again, formalize whatever that is. But I need a, a formal narrative. I've got a town hall coming up. There's some things that we need to get a little bit more clear. Because just like the questions that was asked, they, the citizens are wanting this, but they're wanting firmness. And we we we're too close now. We we're, it's a, it is a year later. So they're looking for a little bit more formalized. Um, you know. And it's okay. It can move, but you know, put it out there and let it slide. So to your point, it's more of a, 
a pilot or just an early release, mm -hmm. that's fine before the official release or the official right. ribbon cut. That's fine, but we got to give them something so they can be standing out there. But it can't just be one day, okay, we finally come to one stuff and then we turn it on and nobody's standing there but me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we still, um, bless you. Yes, ma'am. Are we still planning on uh, sending out uh, direct mailers to your mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We, we've developed a piece um, and, and we're, we're talking about it. Um, our big concern with it is, is the cost. We've gotten some cost estimates on that, and the cost to have the, the item printed and then the, the item mailed is in the range of fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars. So how many people are you targeting? Oh, over a hundred thousand. Okay, so I, okay, seventeen thousand or a hundred thousand parcels. Does parcels equal house or apartments? All of the above. All of the above. All right. So, but yes. Can you? All right. So, all right. So, do this. Can, um, you you had those. Can you just present something formal? Here's what we found out. Here's our research. This sure. how much this will cost. Give us. You know. Here's everybody. You get a smaller universe and just give us a couple of options. Consider maybe just a target area around the buses. But whatever. Just for right now. Uh, make sure you include it, and that does include residential mm -hmm. and commercial. Mm -hmm. But that was a, we got another public engagement coming up here, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, give us some options. Sure. We still want to do the direct mail piece, but again, to that point, you got to design, you got to get it loaded, and you got to mail it. Mm -hmm. So, we we did talk about we we want okay. we want to hold off on that to a little closer to the time we're ready to launch. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. But it's still in the plan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think that's really going to pick up the volume for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got this piece. So, what are you going to do with the, the little brochure that we just got? I don't know what Where are you going to I mean, that's just going to be a handout? No, we're, we're going to distribute that at, at uh, high foot traffic areas. So, uh, takeaways, leave backs, yeah, whatever y'all call them. Yeah, and we're talking about also doing a, a church blitz a couple of weekends. Uh, go to as many churches as you can to hand those out. Well, you, um, gave, you gave it to a key group of stakeholders today. I thought right. that was a great group of, of, of you know, give them these, their stacks. Okay. All right, keep going. I got you. Uh, that's all the updates we've got. I'm sure you want anything else for Do you have any additional uh, packets of these? We do. We can get some. Yes, can she get a bag, guys? Yeah, sure. I'm excited to give them to the churches. She needs a bag. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Fair enough. Miguel? Yes, sir. The, the, next, the yeah. next item on the agenda is uh, it's just um, uh, a discussion uh, or an update, really, on the uh, agreement that's on the agenda tonight uh, for the right of way funding. Uh, the agreement, just in general terms, uh, is to add 6.18, I believe, uh, million dollars to the current. Uh, agreement that's for six million. So it's going from six to uh, twelve point uh, one eight, I believe. And uh, so what what that would do that is uh, uh, going to revive or acknowledge, uh, turn into real money, uh, the commitment that was made. But that is only one component of that commitment. That is, uh, there is another portion of this that um, has always been acknowledged by uh, the DOT and all the other agencies that is was moved uh, when when the project was shelved mm -hmm. it was moved into a future year and so initially it was moved from 2018 to 2023 and more recently they moved it from 2023 to 2028 now but what that the wrong way uh, yes so <coughs> moving the wrong way is is exactly right I have had a meeting with them uh, last week in which uh, dis uh, we discussed the strategy as to who is this with them? with with the Atlanta uh, with the uh, uh, Georgia Department of Transportation uh, the, the planning office and the uh, engineering office okay. and uh, so they are now working on developing a plan to 
be able to capture these funds once uh, we are through with all of the reimbursables for the right of way acquisition. Mm -hmm. There's going to be about six million dollars uh, left over that uh, the the goal is to get that into the construction phase of this project. Yep. Then the amount that's uh, in 2028, <coughs> the allocation that was moved out is close to another four million dollars. So. The strategy that, that they're working on is how to incorporate, uh, how to take both of those components, and uh, they can't do it right today because uh, because they, this agreement is going to move it to the right of way phase. So, how to target a construction phase in uh, the year 2020 or 2021? I requested that they uh, move it to 2020. Uh, they said, give us some flexibility to 2021 uh, if necessary because of the constraints of their funding um, district allocations, uh, not, not uh, local districts, but the, the regional congressional, um, congressional district. So um, that's where we are. They are developing that strategy and uh, I will get some follow-up from them as to where it's going to land. Now, in the meantime, and one of the next items on this, <clears throat> on the agenda is they've asked that we uh, engage our consultant again to begin looking at the plans and particularly the environmental document. Uh, one of the requirements for uh, these projects is that the environmental document not be any older than six months at the time they authorize construction. So obviously this project has been on the shelf for over a year. So, and that is customary, it doesn't apply just to this, it applies to any project that has not been active for, for over six months. So we're having to, um, to re-engage our consultant to update uh, that component of the plan and also to look at the overall set of plans and prep it for construction. Mm -hmm. And so that process, um, the, the update process on the environmental may take six months, it may take eight months. Uh, usually that's about the time frame. Uh, the expectation being that uh, if we bring them online quickly to take a look at the plans uh, and be doing these revisions, we will converge with the funding and having the plans updated and with all the permits ready to go <coughs> and then be able to authorize the project for construction. Okay. So two things I don't want to sort of sidestep this. I want to make sure I'm clear. So this is for the, the six million and the six point one eight. Let's go back to the money. Let's yeah. follow what we just mm -hmm. sort of listened to what you're asking us to expand. How is that different than what we just did? What's the next? It's the same. It's the same. Yes, it, it, it is. Uh, it is the, the same. This agreement will codify that, essentially, uh, because we have. I don't know. One point, point one eight. That, that, that additional one hundred eighty. What is that? Oh, it, it's it's. Uh, well, it, it's just the way the allocation initially was carved out okay. for right of way and for construction. And so, the, so essentially, this uh, the, the the funds that were earmarked or targeted for right of way, yes. and the funds that kind of dissipated and they couldn't uh, acknowledge where they went or what have you. Yes, the sum total of both of those is this twelve point one. It's actually one nine. Twelve point one nine okay. million. And so essentially, they're, they're bringing back the missing money uh, into so they're putting, together to putting them together to, to recognize that this is real funds that were allocated to this project, and they do exist on an account somewhere. And so now that they are in the right of way phase of this project, then we can uh, have them look to reallocate them once we close out the right of way, reallocate them to the right of way acquisition to uh, reallocate to construction. What, so what are we asking tonight then? That 12.18 million is part of what Lee Road, say it again for the record? It's, it's the Lee Road 
right of way acquisition phase. For widening. For the widening from, from I-20 to the line. Just to, I, I have the yeah, say that for me. Okay, the widening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that 12, 6 million plus 6.18 million plus, what did we do um, as a board of commissions? We reappropriated what? Uh, Five yes. million from the SPLOS, um, Anawaki SR92, and another <coughs> six million dollars from the economic development to come up with a total of 11 million dollars that will match this 12.18 million dollars. Well, this will match the remainder of this uh, 12.1, which which will be around six million dollars. So that will get us to 17. There is an additional four million dollars that is currently uh, earmarked for the year 2028, which has to be captured and brought forth mm -hmm. to combine with these other two. Companies. To make it a whole bit of acknowledging, but I get it. So we're working with. So will the 17 million allow us to do what we need to be done? See, and that's going to be cash today, meaning in the next year or so. I'm just no. We need the other four. That's what we're dealing so that's what you're working on. That's, that's we can't even start without that other four. We cannot. So we still were in a hole. So and it's there. It's just in 2028. We yeah. Get, you know, that's what it is. Move it back. Just yeah. back so we're getting close. I see. I'm just trying to set expectations <laughs> as we go into this town hall, which is not why I guess to your to to the call's point to go ahead and resurface the road not knowing when this was going to hit. So it's not like we're out to 2020, maybe 2021. I mean, we don't know. It can come in faster. But I'm glad we made the decision to go ahead and research. Yes. Okay. All right. We're mm -hmm. good. We're good. And, and I think that the reason they're, they're working with uh, the various yes. agencies there are because they, they recognize that we have skin in the game and we're ready. We were serious. We were committed. Mm -hmm. It's still a process. It got away from us. Again, I, I acknowledge. I, I appreciate your effort. I knew that was your number one priority, like to figure this out. And so it took you, you know, it's a four year swing in essence, right? But we appreciate that because it unfortunately got away from us. But um, thank you. That's, it is what it is. So keep going. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so the okay. next. Uh, yep. Yep. Got it. All right. Keep on. Here. Also okay. on the agenda um, this evening is, is an item for uh, a grant application. And uh, essentially, uh, what that will do is uh, allow us to uh, do some striping on, on the roads. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, we've conducted an assessment uh, in-house, an assessment of the condition of the pavement markings and what have you, yes. and developed a priority. Uh, in fact, we were, our intent was for this to be a capital item uh, as part of our budget request, uh, but an opportunity has come, uh, has, has, uh, presented itself, uh, we were informed by GDOT that there is some residual funds that uh, we can apply for, and so that is what the goal of this uh, application is. Now, there's two different uh, programs, one which uh, the application is due on the 1st of April, that's the one on the agenda uh, yes. tonight, uh, and that is for uh, a little over $300,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we they told us um, that the target for the for the county would be 150 and we said well we have billions of dollars worth of needs we'll give you a bigger list and if there if there are residual additional funds that can be applied then uh, you'll have a list and we'll just have so potentially it could be as high as 300,000 that we get total yep. uh, but it might be 150 and so there'd be a local match of 30%, so somewhere between uh, $40,000 and $90,000, depending on the total. Okay. So that is one application, one grant application. Uh, there is a second application. Where, where is the match coming from? For that one? Um, the uh, the uh, expectation would be that it would come from the either Capital Transportation Fund or this the SPLOS. Is it, is it, is it, have we identified this yet? Well, two things I want to make sure what you're sharing with me is intent to be on tonight's agenda or is intent you just broaching this as a recommendation for future? No, this is, this is on tonight's agenda. Okay, so, all right, so you're looking for it right now. So what's the source? 
So, so, so it can't be either or if we go as a recommendation to the full board. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So does does this help not help supplement the current LMIG? It is related because to we have stripe and included in the LMIG already. Correct. So we could incorporate it this is into the LMIG. This is related to the M LMIG program. Yes. Uh, it is uh, residual funds from that program. So the, the funding source for LMIG was lost mm -hmm. the, the, for the local match. So that would be one. Yeah, you're right. We would still have to have our local match for this, even for though it helps supplement. Even though this grant helps supplement our right, LMIG. this is additional. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. So, so that that would be one logical source. Uh, the shorter you, that, that means you're you're shrinking the annual three million dollars that we put. If, you know, again, we use we took some of the current period we use LMIG to supplement the part. No problem. We all agree. No, no issue. So again, just know what you're doing. That six, you know, six years, three million per year. That eighteen million dollars is, is is being. It's, it's shrinking based on these little nudges, these little draws. And I just want to make sure that as we're, you know, we're, we're not, well, again, I guess we would be okay if you're saying that it's still resurfacing, striping, it's all in the same family. Yeah, it's, it's all in the, the same, same family, family, but it's still, it's in my mind, it could be incorporated into the project because we've got the supply side too, which is all of our money. It's no, no GI. No correct. Money. It, so it, we could incorporate it from that side to include the match, which isn't here forty five or ninety thousand, depending on right. how much money. Where does that come from? General fund? Let's uh, let's just say I don't want anything coming out of general fund. Everything's got to be for the yeah. most part. No general fund. <coughs> yes. Yeah. So we're out, we're, if you're telling me we can do this out of the spots, it's just a matter of how we want to frame that. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking, what I'm saying is, you know. With a thirty percent match, we're getting a hundred thousand from them. We match, so we match, say fifty thousand. We'll call it fifty thousand for even numbers. So we're getting more money. So it's not going to hurt the program. No, yeah, it's not going to hurt us to do, uh, and we wouldn't even have to. We may not even have to increase the program. I'm okay. I mean, if you can so work it out that way, it's the spot. Swap. Swap. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Right. But you got to keep up with that bucket. I need that to be reflected in our market. We should re reflect that in our capital transportation bucket. I just need to keep up with this just for how we do okay. this. No, not the capital transportation. The sourcing. Yeah, the spots. The spots. The spots, right. But it's the drag. Yeah, I said it wrong. The spots and, and, are drag. And, and to that extent, Chairman, it, it might be necessary, uh, it might be advisable to have a recommendation from the committee uh, for the board's consideration this evening. Well, that's what I'm saying. So I need to have a source. So it's coming out of the spot somewhere. We need to have something to sign. Okay. Madam Chair? Yeah, just this question about the striping. Will the striping be done in house or with the house? No, no, this would be bid out. Bid out, okay. Yeah. It's included in the project, right? But well, this will be a separate one. It, it could be a it would be a separate project. Uh, I don't know. It'll be contract. It'll be contract because I, they're not gonna um, go through the process in time for us to be able to put it into the L. It'd be another revenue. Okay. So um, if you would entertain a motion, I'd, I'd advance it. Mark, you okay? You know mm -hmm. what to do? Yes. All right. Uh, can I get a motion to a, um, Yes. Uh, I move that uh, we authorize uh, the uh, application match a local match for the off system safety striping program out of the 2016 SPLOST program, uh, not to exceed $90,000. Can I give you a second? Sorry, Amy. Amy, Amy for the discussion. I'm sure you're at peace. You're at peace. Okay. Um, target areas for that will be what equally distributed according to normal rules, or is there something it, specific it, to a certain area? We have a we have a set list that we had uh, discussions with G dot and, and have been inspected. So there is a list that would be presented. Yeah. Okay, and that list will be available tonight. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Um, um, with all discussion being um, satisfied, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed?
it carries five zero. Okay. All right, let's back up just for a minute for a point of order. What about do we need a recommendation for that? I really want a formal recommendation on that six and six point one eight. Can we get one on that as well? Okay. Sure. Skip Mark. <coughs> on the on the same page recommendation we accept the agreement from G Don as is eight. Sorry. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? So let's make sure those are two formal. I just want those two paper trailed. Mm -hmm. That we got. Okay, Mark? Uh -huh. Make sure we got them tonight. Okay, we got them. Okay. okay. Um, the last item on the agenda uh, yep. today is a, a uh, change order that we're going to need to make on the Stuart Mill and Yancey project. Uh, there is a, uh, a series of um, changes that we incurred out in the field, uh, generally related to additional quantities uh, for driveways and sidewalk and making things work out in the field. Yeah. Uh, so the quantities that we'll end up with uh, are going to be higher than originally anticipated. Yes. Uh, the biggest change came in as it related to the paving quantities. Uh, the elevations of the road, for whatever reason, out in the field turned out to be different, uh, substantially different, from what uh, they were back when they surveyed uh, I don't know, three, four, five years ago, however, however long that uh, project was started in, in design. It, it might have been. It might have been as far back as 2010, mm -hmm. and so uh, we had to modify uh, the the alignment or the the elevation of the road to be, to make it fit better what's there. Uh, in the process of doing that, not all was lost because uh, there were some retaining walls that were designed into the project that by changing the elevation of the road, uh, the need for that was. Uh, eliminated. Yep. So it, it turned out to be uh, a savings as it related to that. But the overall change order that, uh, that we're going to be requesting is in the um, uh, in the range of $86,158. How much is the original amount? The uh, original amount was $1.7 million. So, so percentage-wise, is a fairly low number, but uh, this is the pluses and the minuses, so that we are up to date with what we're needing to do and, and uh, be able to. So it's an eight, rate. roughly an eight, but eighty-six thousand. Eight million. Million. Just talked about there's one point seven million. One point seven million. So about four or five percent variance. Mm -hmm. If I get on there fast enough to die. Um, okay, let's keep it moving. Yep, and that, that's it. How much now was the change order? I'm sorry. The change order was uh, to be exact. $86,158.85. So how do we accommodate that? What is the source for this change order? This is just this come out of the SPLOS. This is actually 202 SPLOS. Yes. So, the, so the funds are in place for it to cover. You have additional funds left over in that? Correct. This project. Right. This is a 2002 SPLOS project, mm -hmm. okay. and there are funds so in... you want to move this, I want to get a formal recommendation on that. I got you. Or because now you're moving it across SPLOS. No, 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 we're not moving. It's a 2002 SPLOS project. It's being paid out of that fund. Yeah. It's the same yeah, process. It's straight yeah. out. So yeah. we're moving into the current mm -hmm. amount. So, so we have funds to a standalone project that, that, that had money in it. Yes, correct. Right. That's yes. correct. Has money in it, and there's money left over. So there's some... There's some contingency in there for things like this okay, for so that project. For that project that's already done. There is no, it's in the process. process. It's, being, it's under construction. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. That's good. Yeah, I know, but it, it's under construction under what? The 16 spots or the 2002 spots? 2002. Okay. All right, so y'all have been funding this all along with just pure 2002. It has nothing to do with the current spots. Correct. Mm -hmm. No co mingling of the funds. That's nope. all I'm trying to get no, to. Sir. Mm -hmm. Totally separate. Totally oh, separate. Sir. I'm good. That's what I wanted to clarify. Okay, so this is money that was just left over, and so therefore there needs to be some type of okay. Feel the feel, uh, feel uh, adjustments. Okay. Um, and, and I don't know whether you also want a recommendation on this. Uh, might might be. Yeah, definitely more change order. 
But to, to emphasize, this is, this is a 2002 SPLOS coming out of 2000. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion? Well, yes. I, 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 I second. I second. Okay. Any further discussion? My only point is, should I clarify what we just made a motion and a second on, please? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and time for us to sign tonight. All in favor. What's well, not on the agenda for that? No, no. This is not on the agenda. This item will come up at the next meeting. Yeah. But we will need to have it. We'll just, just not call it at once. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any All right, Miguel, anything else that needs to come before um, this Transportation Committee of March 19, 2019? No, sir. I have one item, though. I have two. Okay. Good. I believe I have two. 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 Okay. Two. 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 Maybe the same as the chairman. Okay. All right, Mike, I got um, I'll yield to you, too. Madam Chair? Okay. Uh, just wanted to see if I could get an update on the road ratings. How are we coming with that? Okay. The, the road ratings are underway, and, and, and in fact, uh, uh, initially, uh, I asked them to concentrate on roads that we intend to put on the next contract, so that when we bring them to the board, we already know the, the rating of those roads. Uh, so they're working on that. They, they've already started. Uh, when they start? Uh, they started about two weeks ago. Yeah, I think I've seen a little truck that's riding around. Mm -hmm. what, what, yeah, I've seen. Uh, so, so, so it's underway, and I've asked them to track it on a on a map. And so periodically, when we provide updates, we'll be able to see how much of the county has been done as they as they progress. Um, one of the one of the roads that I asked them to do uh, initially was uh, Douglas Boulevard. However. They reminded me that that is in the city, uh, that that it would not be part of the contract, and and uh, so they they asked whether the county has maintenance responsibility on that road, and after checking the agreements between the county and the city, we do not. So uh, that is a road that needs help, as we all agree, uh, but it's in the city, so I I guess we'll need to. Have so that was under the second agreement. City streets agreement, not the not the city streets agreement. Will only be traffic signals correct of that nature. Correct. Okay. So what are we saying? Those boulevards not city. That is not a county road. It's not a county road, road. It's for maintenance. It so is not part of those six roads that we correct. adopted or took over. That's correct. All right. Keep going. So I'm sure you want to finish your opinion. So so essentially, uh, the, the process is underway. Uh, they they're hopeful that they can get the bulk of this done by August is what they're telling me, August of this year. So um, we will have at least uh, most of the county completed, if all goes well, in time for budget discussions about mm -hmm. the next resurfacing program. Mm -hmm. okay. That's fine. So then based on that point, can we, in April and June and August, can we get just sort of an update um, not necessarily it has to be both the committee and the board commission, but I'd like them to see the map of um, some type of progression over time. Um, Certainly. It, it, that data that you talk about, I'd like, we haven't seen it yet at committee level, but I'm sure my mm -hmm. peers, you know, they always want to see themselves in something, especially if they, their vote was involved in the signing off. Sure. Okay. Now, I'm sure you do mm -hmm. that. No. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be all three meetings, but at some point between those, uh, pick one which is appropriate for you guys. Is, um, Schedule. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, they can do. They can actually do this as plots projects. They can. They can do it as part of the part of the squad presentation. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you're mm -hmm. not full in April, just push maybe May. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Okay. 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 Then my last question is uh, that we have the same one more. Uh, Fairburn Road and um, Mount Vernon. Have you heard any, any, any traction on that? Nothing. Nothing uh, beyond the discussions uh, the last 24 hours. Uh, but but essentially, uh, probably about maybe a month ago, I had a meeting with the district engineer, and that was one of the main topics of discussion. I, I traveled over to the to their offices to make sure they understood the uh, the urgency of, of the project, mm -hmm. and uh, they're having uh, some of the same difficulties in terms of staffing that everybody else is having, and so that was part of the the response at that time, they do know now, uh, certainly, and with your uh, uh, 
additional intervention and, and discussions and, and uh, prodding uh, as well uh, how much of a, uh, how, how urgent this need is for the county. And so they're, they're uh, pooling in additional resources to try and address this. And I talked to Kathy this morning. Mm -hmm. She said, she said they're reviewing it and they know that it needs to be done quick, so they're trying to get the project done as quickly as possible. Did you um, even talk about uh, West Sherman? If you, you know, we may even engage in it or you remove it, you know, pay them on the front end and then they reimburse us. Is that an option? You know, the G dot, you reimburse us. Is that an option? Well, once, once the project's approved, we're ready to go. Once they approve the project, then they will they will give us that document that says, okay, here's here sign this, we're ready to go. And right. so we then we move it or we have to wait on G back to move it. I mean no, once still, they approve it. Yeah, there's two components, Madam Chair. There, there's the warrants analysis for the signal. Mm -hmm. And then there's the funding consideration, who pays for what. I think what, what Mark is, is alluding to is once they clear the warrants for the signal, the project is ready to go and therefore the funding would go with it. They would participate with it. Now, if they do not approve it, then we would have to try and go that route. Um, I don't know how... So we can't accelerate it through... No, we could not. By, by, set, yeah, by, by offering to front it, Madam Chair, is what I'm hearing, because um, funding is not necessarily the issue here, is getting that warrant analysis Review done and having them approve what is being proposed for you. And then, um, one more. What about Pilgrim Road? I believe you talked about you know, some of the edging that we were in. When you talked to Kathy this morning, what sort of Yes, so Kathy is? said she told me to send her a request mm -hmm. and send her a hold harmless, <coughs> um, which we're going to tie that back to the contract where we are. So she would send me an email with directions on what what we need to do and she said it may be just she said i'll review it it may be just that you know i'll let you know that you can proceed mm -hmm. but i haven't heard back from her yet but i did talk to her this morning and i talked to one of her assistants after lunch mm -hmm. um and he was sitting in there with her and they were discussing it so they were working through it and so i'm waiting on her to send me something i've got i'm working on three prices i've got scope ready i already have the one price that we talked about mm -hmm. but i need the GDOT component in there before I can get the prices, because that would be part of it. They would charge us for, depending on what GDOT requires. If they require nothing, you know, I had to get prices now. Mm -hmm. But if they require, I don't know, certain particular types of traffic control, then yes, their price would increase. Mm -hmm. So I gotta have the GDOT component before I can get the prices. But I've got contractors lined up ready to give me a price. Mm -hmm. Edging and trimming and sweeping and those mm -hmm. Okay. Are you okay? All right, well, related to that, I, I want to let the uh, for time administrator. So you got SR92 and um, Mount Vernon as a project that we know we've been working on for about a year, give or take. Um, we just um, reappropriated funds off of Riverside and SR92 to accommodate other things. But the need was still there to deal with some type of how to return. Mm -hmm. The solution that we reappropriated was, no, well, we're not about to cut another whole, you know, angle into a light that could have been done originally when they did. They think about it. When, when they when they moved away from Lower River Road, right, which is where the old Riverside was, right, uh, and they created Riverside Parkway. Well, as opposed to stopping right at SR19, why didn't they go ahead and just connect up to? Uh, and wake at that time, right? And so, uh, I mean, we were cut the road. It, it, it was, uh, Mark, we didn't cut that road, did we? No, that would have been George Bill too. Right. So we do. So to drop that on us, to drop, to take six million, like ah, but well, we still need a solution there because it, it, it wasn't the most ideal. You left it just a little bit at the end, and so we still need a solution for the left turn lanes um, onto SR ninety two or turning off of SR ninety two onto Riverside. Um, traffic is bad, it's dangerous, people oh, yeah. trying to cut across there, it's coming down a hill both ways, and it's just, um, you know, it's like a little speedway, and you're on up, and you're on back the other way. Uh, and so I want to make sure we, and, um, 
Moreland knows this. They have them dispossess this as a marker. They do them. Uh, as of this afternoon, they do. They do? Mm -hmm. Yes, they've got a marker. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're putting attention on that mm -hmm. as a project. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that, that it's actually funded, so uh, we, we didn't take all the money. We left money uh, with about a million dollars in safety and operational improvements, or what you call it. Correct. That is the source to fix um, SR-92 in Riverside. Correct. And, and so procedurally, what's going to happen is with, with the request for qualifications that we are advertising, yep. when those come in, we're going to have this project. We're going to have the northbound lane, turn lane at Douglas Boulevard. Yes. We're going to have other locations where we need a package. A, a package. And so uh, we will have, we'll be able to uh, have one consultant handle one or two of those, a different consultant handle one, and so spread out so that uh, we're able to come back with designs, yes. solutions for these uh, locations mm -hmm. and with that will come an, an estimate of what it's going to take to fix it mm -hmm. and uh, after that we'll have to decide how we do the process okay so right, mark good you got it we know it i just want to make sure for the record we mm -hmm. don't lose that that mm -hmm. one and mount burning nine two correct that's what we're doing together mount yeah, burning and um riverside are both together same package mm -hmm. now all of those. Okay. Go ahead. So the two items I have, you mentioned yesterday. So the raises for Douglas County DOT employees. Mm -hmm. So based on our last conversations, we were waiting on the March revisit, which I'm not sure how that's going to go. It doesn't look like it would be fruitful for us. But anyway, so how much were we short on those? Was it thirty thousand that we had decided we were short? Uh, between the, the two iterations? Yes. Um, I don't remember. No, I, I, I think came up one time, then I think you changed you Yeah, I, I think it was closer to 100,000. I think it was 30 initially because we we were limiting the number of employees, but then it became, it, it added close to another 100,000. Yeah, so we were looking for 100,000 short to make that recommendation up. It has to go to the board, so we're 100,000 short. So what do y'all want to do? How do y'all want? To, how do you want to proceed with that topic? Well, I, for me, yes, I want to. And so I, I had one that I wanted to make sure I talked about capacity, and um, that was part of your next one. But it's next one. Okay, well, let's mm -hmm. keep going then, and then now wrap it up. Go ahead. Okay. This is related. Just so, the second one, 2018 LMIG, you mentioned yesterday, uh, in-house versus contract. Okay. If we go, right now it's currently in-house. I think the paver is really close to being repaired, mm -hmm. last I heard. We haven't seen it back yet, I don't think, but it's close. We, we actually did get it back, okay. um, and we're testing it out. There's additional field testing that has to occur by having the vendor, you know, observe as we operate. So we're really close. But it is closer that. to us being able to get but us. If we switch, if we switch the rest of that 2018 LMIG, which the problem wasn't the 18 LMIG, it was the 2017 sure. that was 45 miles of roads and $7 million that caused the 2018 LMIG to go into 2019 but anyway so if we switch the 2018 LMIG resurfacing list to the contract with the same amount of money we have to decrease the number of miles I understand because contract will probably it's a premium it will almost it will at least it'll double or double not triple at least okay, so how many miles do we go from to what how many miles is it right now well it's around 10 miles for in uh, for uh, the LMIG and another 12 uh, 11.6 miles or 12.6 miles, I think it's about close to 22 miles total. All right, 22 miles. We got about four places, so that's what five miles each. So we get two and a half miles basically, or less. Uh, we've done that before. Uh, okay, uh, we had to just we had very little money, um, but it's about speed. It's it's. It's capacity, um, which brings me to my next point, which is related is being able to keep up with all of this. Um, I, I thought that in 
intent of the in-house was to do strategic. Um, uh, so what was strategic things, operations, you know, cold and sacks, potholes, et cetera, parking lots at the Cultural Arts Center, I'm just making stuff up, mm -hmm. right? At the, but it was never to be a full crew because it, it was a universal work. Your staff was created to be able to do a lot of different things, but it's not a dedicated crew, right? You don't have that capacity. So then I'm listening to the conversation about pay, right? So um, if you ask me for $100,000, then for that, I need higher performance, you know, more throughput. Uh, else, well, why don't I just give that to the, to the difference with the contract, for the contractors to, to mm -hmm. so it's a trade-off. So that's why, I mean, this is a good conversation. Yeah, related. Part of the pay, though, was related to, to trying to retain employees. Mm -hmm. Plus, we had a comparison with uh, Cobb County, Paulding County, who else, all these, and mm -hmm. we were low on the total, we were the lowest mm -hmm. one on the total boat. Mm -hmm. see yeah, our turnover rate. rate. All right, so, okay, let's just say I paid you. Let's assume you're already doing your job. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to bring you up to market to retain you. Mm -hmm. We well, can't give you no higher performance if you're already doing your job. So where's my... So I'm people okay. we're losing. Okay. But do you hear what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm no, assuming, no, assuming all things equal. Cool. I haven't seen an evaluation. Not existing people. It's, we, we've hired people, and then three days they're gone because they find out they can get a job. Easier job somewhere else for more money. Yeah, and part of, part of the to the do, uh, drag on capacity is personnel. Mm -hmm. it, it, the more, uh, in fact, when we did the analysis, the higher paid positions have the longest longevity because, well, they're not drawn away from us. So that that makes sense. That's yeah. intuitively makes sense. So, but again, so the hundred thousand covers how many people? That's yeah, uh, thirty. 30 people. Mm -hmm. And plus, you always say you have some in your budget. Yes. You have some money. Covers 30. Areas. I don't know. Covers 30 people that are existing or includes open boxes. Open, open boxes. boxes as well. <coughs> so What's the that. difference between the two? 30 out of the 30, how many is open and how many is existing? Six, six are open positions. All right. Mm -hmm. So, what are we going to draw this extra 100 from? See that the merch just recently. It would have. It would either have to come from the general fund or it would come from uh, contingency, like the part-time position for uh, juvenile public defender was recommended to come. Was proposed to come from today, tonight. All right. So and it, it, all right. No, and the lumber it takes. Miguel to, to fill some other positions. It might eat into that But uh, probably four hundred and fifty right now. But uh, is this one hundred? Four hundred. Is this one hundred thousand based on just the remaining of the month? I mean, the year that we have. You know, we've already lost a couple of pay periods. So if you if you annualize it, will it be less than a hundred thousand? So would, I think we originally had have, have envision that we wouldn't start that one till April. Yeah. So we've already accounted for so it'd be nine months. We've already accounted for a couple months. So which okay with um I'm I'm listening to y'all but I'm also processing so Mark we're in um the finance committee. Uh, we're we're doing a ten we're doing a ten above and beyond you know you've got some cushion in there. Um, I'm just trying to think of sources of where the cash is going to settle. Um, mm -hmm. So your your nine months. When you look at the calculation, the nine months is hundred thousand. Um, yeah, but that's including benefits, the, the salary. Oh. Yeah, that's fully noted. They already. Have. Mm -hmm. they, already they already. Well, there's incremental. It goes up. It goes up based on. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so to, to do this 100, I, again, I get it. I'm, I'm still so like six new positions out of 30, so that's 20% of the time. I don't know how much more capacity can we get through that? Um, well, it's not six new ones. Or six open. He said it's six, six open. open, but it's it's bumping the bottom, the laborers and some of the equipment operators up. I'm fine. Let's have me and bring them up to market. I'm, I'm, well, I'm looking for. Again, we're, we're trying to solve, we're behind. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm concerned 
as we get further, which is where I'm going with my last question, which is how do we fulfill the work that from the, the middle to the top, we've got a hole. That, that we need, you need additional capacity there as well. So it's not only at the bottom, but it's also like, okay, you can't do all this if you literally are in all these meetings all day long, and then you got to go and oversee specs. You got to, you got to help write specs. It's like, no, I'm okay. I mean, you, you physically can't do that. And so I'm, I'm trying to, so I'm listening, and I'm like, where is that one at as well? Because I, I mean, the whole system has to move. Uh, and so um, I, I'm. If I'm going in, I'm going in to solve, which I think is the more critical, which is the leadership component, which is like, okay, you need some help. You need, you, need, you need a bench. I don't care if it's part-time, I don't care if it's consultant, contractor, or full-time, but somebody has to be in there that's helping us get through these next two to three years when all this stuff is building up all these. Now, I've heard you say that you want to use standby contractors, you're going to dust up that list that we had before, all the 10 mechanical civil and so forth. I'm just trying to help move the system along. I'm okay with the pay, but I need the performance behind it to sort of warrant it. That's all I'm trying to hear. Yeah, and, and if I could offer this, please. The the uh, uh, less if we if we focus on the new position or the vacant position, if, if I can hire somebody with three years experience versus six months or zero experience, I am that much more able to hit the road running in paving. Somebody who's familiar with some of the equipment is already, you know, with minimal training, we can put them out in the field to, to begin uh, delivering uh, on the capacity. As opposed to bringing people in that have no experience, very little, and we go through a training, so it becomes a drag on the system until we get them trained, and then as soon as we get them trained, they become liabilities because they go get a job somewhere else. I understand, but, but, but again, here's where we, we get to hold contractors accountable, like we're going to use Riverside versus something else, which is like, and we talked about this when we first came on board, which is you need a time to be able to ramp up, right? So we're two years in, right? So we're still four years in, so let's just say I'm, I'm at a mid midpoint. It's good, good evaluation, but you're at a midpoint, and so, we're behind. We now have an evaluation. We said, okay, the in-house, like, I mean, it takes time to nurture, to grow a team, to, to get them going. But there's the public optic, like, okay, guys, where, where's my, where's this? Where's that? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to balance, I get you, but you don't have to prove anything other than just do what you can do with what you got. But there's a broader need that, yes, it's going to cost us supreme, but it meets the expectation of the public. That, that that's what I'm trying to balance. That in-house versus like, I, and I'm, I'm we're getting behind. You'll get there, but it could be three, five years out. And, and I'm, I'm looking. We're looking for today. So how do you help us? Help me solve. So I'm saying, I hear what you're advocating for, and it's not either or. I'm not making it mutually exclusive, but it's got to be both. In other words, I'll help you get that. But I've been asking for this this this, this middle tier to help you get unstuck. Just the same amount of time. So I'm like, okay, well, where are we at with the, the, the interviewing of our number two or whoever? However, y'all would approach it again. Yeah, you're talking about number two and uh, the traffic ops engineer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. the Division. traffic ops uh, yeah. manager. Okay. So yeah, because we've lost another another uh, person in, in the department. So yeah, certainly there's a, there's a drag on, on my time. Um, not enough. To, to go around and address all the things, but uh, so so, but we're keeping things moving. Now, w one thing that I would that I would say is uh, to try and put things in perspective. Uh, uh, we're we're trying to to sort of dig us out of the hole, and some of that uh, drag is still reflecting in in our current uh, organization, but. If it weren't for the improvements in the current organization, that drag would still be that much lower. Uh, we're, we're, able, we're being able to get projects uh, through the process unstuck into construction. This spring, 2019, this year is going to be the most active for the department in many, many years. So we have in-house projects, we have 
uh, projects that are going to be done, uh, funded entirely by the county. We have two projects that have state funds, federal funds on them. Uh, a lot of activity happened. Now, it took a while to drag that through and out of the hole, but we are at the cusp of there. 2019 will reflect that uh, improvement that we're thinking. Right, we'll see. Look at it this way. We got 50% of our spas is transportation. Your staff versus outsourcing is really two different worlds, right? In theory, everything we're doing with spas is outsourced. It's contractors. Yours is just some oversight to make sure it's specced up, but it's all outsourced. That's our bang for our buck. If we had just a general fund and just without a spas, we'd have very few dollars to work with, right? Look at our historical. So while I get the performance of the of, of internal, but it's all about the splos. It's all about <coughs> moving that along. So I'm like, okay, I get it, but and I get what you what, what, what our internal DOT stands for. But I, I keep when I hear perhaps that we're we're behind on intersections and we, we, we need assistance on um, evaluating things. I'm sitting here like, well, that's a priority. I'm not saying this ain't a priority. But that is a priority, and so I'm, I keep saying, I keep, I keep hearing the advocacy forward. Yes, y'all are doing great. I, I still, I'm, I'm, so you don't have to justify where you are. We're just trying to solve the, how do we solve these open positions? The number two and the traffic guy. Just where are we at in interviewing? Where are we at in the feedback? Uh, because we keep talking about this, and it's like it don't take that. I mean. But Morley, you don't, I'm, I'm teasing Vicky. I'm like, Vic, Vicky, you want to come over here? It, like, it, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I haven't done that, but I'm like, how hard is it to find that person to move us along, whether it's a consultant, a contractor? And, and I get, even to do that, that makes you busy. And that you either take time out to look at maybe three out of five people that ain't even worth your time, but that's all you had to come through the door. Get it, but how do we solve this? Because we're not the only person in the region, and I'm looking at different things out there. People moving around. I'm looking at what other people you should work at. They are all moving around. I'm like, it's not like we're we're invisible to what's happening out there. We're like, well, I see the movement. I see we, we got you here. So what, what what does it take to solve that? Because that's that's something that the, the, the board of commissioners have been talking about. The full board of commissioners, which it, rarely are we all on 100% one page, but on that topic right there. We all agree that there's, we're looking for a solution there. So this is just not committed. We've talked about this publicly. So how do we solve it? It, it is an, an ongoing challenge. Uh, the, the, uh, w without getting into too many specifics uh, in this form, uh, it, it, uh, it is a challenge getting uh, qualified applicants uh, with, with the level of experience and expertise that we're looking for. Uh, so, so yeah, that that needs to be addressed. I, I think uh, uh, part of the part of solve. I, I want to leave. Mentor made that comment. Was the, have we ever softened uh, um, the? Let's say you want twenty years. I mean, yeah. we ain't gonna find about forty years like you. But let's say you wanted twenty years. Uh, uh, have we ever looked at ten? Or if you wanted thirty, have you ever looked at twenty? I mean, have you you've taken off a decade to say that buys this time? It may not be to the level that you would think that's a number right. two, but. We just want to move it along, and, it, and it's okay. We can always change at a later date. Yeah, we have, uh, we have, uh, we we did take a look at that and and softened it a little bit. Problem is that even at that lower level, uh, there isn't uh, there isn't uh, the, the pool that we're looking for. Now, I, I do intend to take another look to see if there is a different structure that perhaps uh, would work for us as well. Uh, and and uh, I will bring back that recommendation to you uh, as to perhaps there's another way to address this, and a, a different configuration. I mean, is it about pay? I mean, it, I mean we recognize that there may be a, a pay premium, but we pay, get that. Pay is part of it, and, and perhaps uh, these days uh, is, is a, a big factor. But what is happening is that there's a limited pool of uh, longer standing uh, individuals in this field and the consultants because there is so much uh, work out there they're just gobbling them up and so if you have if you have a consultant buying for the talent of an individual versus a county or municipality they can outbid us just about at every turn 
And so by doing that, it, it is, it's a actual, actually a double hit because not only do, do you not have the capacity and can't get it, but they have it and they can charge a premium. And so they're, they're always happy to help you uh, for a fee. I said, and I, and I think that's just what we'll, we'll, we'll entertain those. We have an interim person who's really a consultant or a contractor that just helps us get through a season. So I don't have to put a long term on my pension and so forth. I got to pay a premium and outright you know, monthly fee. That's fine. So again, we keep, we're talking about it and I don't want to be three years out having the same conversation about it. So it, we can just as easily move on $100,000 to get you at the bottom then do I need to pay another hundred thousand dollars to do what I need to do at the top? See, I'm, I'm, it's got to be both. It's, and so if you're asking for my vote to, to do the bottom, I need the top because the top is what we started with versus, right? The top is where we start. And so that's all I'm asking then, uh, Mark, I'm going to you to help on this one. We started with the top. We started with that. So uh, I'm saying for, for me to support the bottom equity, I need capacity at the top because we're, we're going to continue to get behind. He still needs help. So we need to contract somebody who just does design work, does, who has the authority, the leadership to come in here. Um, and whether it's through Morgan or through whomever, I'm, I'm not trying to design it for y'all. I'm just saying, whatever you need to give you additional capacity because you're in these meetings. And he, I mean, have somebody else right now that's not in this meeting that's in the corner that has capacity to get us through this. To, to do that, why, why can't, I mean, I'm just saying, well, what's hard about that? Well, as far as the number two, I think that we can't, we can't go much higher than what we have in the budget. But what we could do while we're looking for a number two is we could, we could hire someone from a consultant and then farm out that employee to us like on rent. That, that's what was happening. I took that person's place when I came here. 15 years ago. Okay. They were working for us with consultants. They were working for more than half of them, actually. Um, so that is a possibility we can do that. I've been bringing all of those are options. That's what I'm saying. We sounds like we're, we're only pursuing the one linear. We're going out there, we're looking for ass and people respond, but all like, man, go cut a deal with somebody and get them in here. I, I just, I cannot believe that there's no way that we don't know enough people to like, look, I need to come over here and work for a period of time. I just, I mean, just to do this assignment. So pouts around the assignment yeah. that we need to get done, that's all I'm looking for. And then for. two years ago, I had, this was before Miguel came, I had contacted five or six different companies because I knew they had people that I knew. Right. Talked to them, tried to find this person to, you know, to, to hire a consultant to be our number two. Couldn't find anybody. But that was in. We can try it again, see what we can find now. Again, there's a lot of people too. I thought we were trying to, again, so here I'm going to turn it. So let's formally authorize this to, 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 to okay, let's, let's, it was already engaged. I mean, it's already, I, I can't give, we can't give you no more authorization. I'm sure it's already, you've been already authorized to hire this person. Well, it just it requires the effort. It's great working on the course. You know, I think the resources to like this is not about searching and recruiting for us or, and he's advertised Masters, for the position. Or a national research, uh, national surgeon. You know, just see what he, what, what's in the pocket. I mean, he does, one of the guys, or he wasn't local. One of the persons that applied, but he did, I don't think he was qualified. Um, well, again, we didn't have in our budget for these standby mechanical, civil, all these electrical engineers. We're doing all this stuff around, I think, you know, so we need a group of those people where it's not the budget. You want this extra 100000 for the lower pay to make them equitable or to make them par, parity. I got it. We don't have it in the budget. And yet we have in the budget, number two, uh, it could be something that's been budgeted. We've already rushed this commission, but yet it's just what I'm saying. Like, well, what, what the party of the Board of Commission, we authorized and we gave money for it. And it's not getting done. But yet, it's like we're going around that, that well, I can think about it, but there's a more but more practical need that, okay, I want this, I want that. But it's like, well, what we gave you priority for these. So that's what I'm saying. I'm pausing and says, I can't go back to the board of commissioners, my fellow peers, and say, hey, I need y'all to, 
to, to give a little bit of money for this. And they asked me, but what about that? I'm like, well, so I'm, sure I'm not comfortable with it, and especially with the fact that we haven't really budgeted. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer. I would feel better if, in fact, I had some type of assurance at this moment that y'all would go and pursue this. I mean, so this is, y'all got this moment right now to give me some type of assurance up here if I can bring it forward. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I need a commitment, Mark. I'm going to look, you're okay. Mark, I need a commitment. Because the board commissioners are already, you know this, you've talked to them. We're clear on what we would like to see. So we've been committed. We've been looking. We've been looking hard. Yeah, you're you going to relook now. You you look. You know, it sounds like y'all didn't look. Anybody out there with, with five to seven, five to seven years? Anybody it's for a specialist to help him with these specs. Yeah. It's about yeah. the design. It's, it's, about, it's a special. It's not even, man. It's not about the years. It's just when, like Miguel said, there's so much engineering work out there. They're they're sucking all these people up. They're hiring. Yeah, but there's people out there, guys. It's not an absolute. There's somebody who wants a, a lifestyle. Somebody who wants sure. something that says, no, you can frame this the right way. It says, look, all I need to do is sit in the corner, help them out around these issues, and we're going to pay the premium of a number two to get this done for the next two, three years, to buy us this time, allow everything to begin to breathe. That's all we're saying. Yes, you can. And we're looking. Yes, okay. well, you, you have that commitment from us that we will look for that solution. You know, we've just got to find the right person that realizes that when the economy goes bad, you these engineering them? firms are going to lay people off, and more than likely, Beaver County is not. But we didn't last time they come in. Well, why don't you go to a, one of those? Um, um, I mean, I've got hired a lot um, um, to one of those executive search firms that, that are technical or engineering. Why don't you go to one of those that, like, I y'all kidding me? Like, come on, don't, don't kid me. Go to one of those firms and say, hey, we've got a need, and, and that's what we're going to obviously pay a premium, we've got to pay a fee, that's fine. But you can't say that there's not, if you don't even have the time and the capacity to go do this, and the HR is already busy, why don't y'all hire somebody and go find somebody? This is not hard. I mean, there, there's people who know how to place people, strategically place people, like, look, this is what we're looking for, and you, you pay for that. And that's, that's, that's where I'm... Yeah, and I've, I've engaged with HR and done additional advertising for all yep. of these positions. Yep. And the outcome was still the same. I think so. And as you use a placement firm versus just yeah. using our HR and putting something on the job site, and we use an actual placement firm that has a, a placement firm. No. But I called, yeah, I called them. I think this was when we were looking for the position before we hired Miguel. And it was. Twenty-five thousand dollars for like a month. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have the money to say no. I didn't yeah. have the for a season, but again, we're trying to find. Again, we've had enough conversation on this. We're gonna let this one go for now. Now, I'm sure you got anything else you want to add? Tell me, okay? He's got the switch here. You good? Yeah. Uh, speed lights. I mean, I'm working on you. Yeah, I'm working with Georgia. Yeah, I've got a list. I got a couple of questions with you offline. Okay. That's it. We should be good. Okay, well, speaking of lights, just for the record, I, we did ask our district commissioners to come out and return back to us a set of lights, Miguel. Anybody respond? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Okay. Mark, you got my list, right? So yes, sir. Clarify, um, we, we did clarify that Lee Road um, it, lights are not part of the package like we originally anticipated, so therefore, Lee Road manager has been added to District 2's list um, in addition to your set alone. Once you see the other the commissioners, we get that information today, so we can move. They didn't respond. They didn't respond. Mark with you. Uh, no. We've got all the commissioners. You, are, you already have all this. Well, no, they don't want anything. They didn't respond. You can't make them. Okay. People, come back Okay. I mean, it's not like. But, but because they didn't I'll respond, check. but. You know, you have everybody else's office up in Vice Chairman's request. 166 for me. I'll put just a few Well, you don't mind. Right. You don't miss. Okay, they got mine. Yes, please. Madam Chair, anything else you want to add? Yeah, everything else. Miguel, anything else you want to add to the meeting? Uh, not today. All right. Gary? Not today. I'm good. All right. Last voting member, County Administrator, we good? Yes, sir. I'm good. Working on all the recommendations. So I'm in front of you. Okay. 
If there's nothing else needs to come before this um, transportation committee meeting of March 19, 2019, let it be satisfied as adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Very good.